And is is this the end of the hall, or does the hall continue? No, it, it, it ends. So basically, again, think you're like walking down an exclamation point. You've got to the circle below it, uh, and so it, it kind of curves out to make a, a circular spot where this thing is floating. But it doesn't seem like you can go any further on either side of it. So as we have been walking down, you said it was about a hundred feet, yeah, roughly, to get yeah. to where we are, rough, roughly. Uh, I was definitely casting some alarm spells as we walked okay just in case anything comes up behind us we'll know um when we see this we see the room kind of go out around us that we're getting up to Mm -hmm. looking up what does the ceiling do is Uh, it still like a dome it's dome but it goes much further so it, okay. it, it's probably another 20 feet higher. Uh, again, imagine there's just like a circle of space here yeah. and it's equal distance all the way around. And is there anything like I'm just going to cast light spells like up as high as they'll go. Is there anything up there at the top of the sphere? Uh, there are. Hmm. It looks like imagine. At one time, there's like a mural that was painted, mm-hmm. but it's so old that it's degraded that nothing really is clear. But like you, you've you've been in like cathedrals before and temples before, so the structure, the shape of it, like you can imagine at one point there was something up there probably related to the beliefs or whatever of this temple, but it's there's just nothing that you can see. Everything's too old, too degraded. There, are there any alcoves or other hallways or balconies nothing that you can see from here okay I mean, what do you I, think it says on the dais i mean we gotta go look right i i, I i'm, yeah. I'm trying to go see all right I, i'll be honest with you uh is it like i'll walk up to it and like poke it is well, it floating so before you get to that, when you're about 10 feet away, you can feel that where you're, you're with your foot, that the floor slopes down. So oh. if you continue on, you're going to get in increasingly deep water. Now you're only like 10 feet away, but you're going to get in deeper water as you get closer. I just want to make, I'm not going to like got you with that. Just so you know, is that something you're cool with? So it's it's like the the deep end of the pool that that slant down. I feel that. Yep. Whoop, I can feel my foot go out from me. Hold, hold on, hold on, slow down. I, I kind of tap around with my foot underneath the water, and the water's real. We said it was real brackish, so we can't see through it. Yeah, muddy it's and, and, dark, okay. muddy, dirty. I'll take my short bow off my back and uh, and try to see if I can depth sound it. Just if it's not too deep. With the bow. Uh, so yeah, so you could you, the pretty much like what um, Caleb was describing. It's like the deep end of the pool. It slants down, so you can feel that it seems to be pretty consistent. So your guess is you're going to be about four feet deep in water when you get to the platform. Don't like that. Don't like that. And this is basically a big circular room. So mm-hmm. if we go to the left and the right a little bit. Does it feel like it's all equally sloping down, like yes. a, like a cone? I'll make a make a lap. Uh, yeah. So for the entire width of this hallway, it, it, everything is sloping down towards that. So we came down an exclamation point, and now we're in an ice cream cone. Yeah. <laughs> this episode brought to you by snacks or shapes. <laughs> or shapes. It's like, it's like Sesame Street. <laughs> um, near far zombies <laughs> water creatures <laughs> zombies uh, oh say that um yeah those happen later <laughs> right. uh, snap cut two and it's only 10 feet though right yeah all right well i don't like any of this but we got to figure this out. So I'm happy to, to look at it. If, if you want to stay back and give me some backup. You want to, may I will offer you moral support. Toss gremlin. 
she sticks her head out and gives you a very dirty look. Yes, very dirty. All right. Uh, well, you're graceful and agile. She says something very dirty in Fox. I heard that. It's ble- it's bleeped out. It's PG thirteen show. Redacted. Redacted Fox cursing. I didn't even speak that language, and I knew it was bad. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to wade forward <laughs> and go towards uh, the the platform. Okay. As I get closer to it, uh, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm like average height, so like five eight. I'm not I'm not that tall. Um, so I'm I'm starting to float a little bit, but I'm still kind of walking as much as I can. Right. You did that, that, you know, almost like astronaut sort of walk when you're in a swimming pool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I imagine Gremlin is like only on perch on your head right now. Oh, definitely. Okay. hundred percent. All right. So a couple um, things. Uh, yeah. so you're able to get there. No problem. It, it is slick, but it's not necessarily dangerous. You're a trained adventurer. Oh. You've done things like this before. I've definitely fallen a couple times. You've de- well, yeah, right. But not dangerously so. But what you notice is as you get right to the uh, edge of this disc is that the water is not actually touching the disc. There's about a half inch space where the water stops and just doesn't actually touch the disc all the way around. Uh, Hey, guys, this is weird. Oh, we know that. Uh, um, I would like one of you to come and look at this, but I don't want to tell you why, because I because that would <laughs> it would it, ruin the surprise. It would possibly invalidate the experiment we're trying to do. I want to see if you see the same thing I see. Saul looked at Arya. You want to go or do you want me to go? Rochambeau. All right. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Good. Do it. Do it. One, two, three, yeah. shoot. Do yeah. it. Come on. Okay. All right. all right. Ready? Yeah. One, One two, 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 three. three. Shoot. Ah, both scissors. Uh, oh. All right. Fine. I'll go. <laughs> all right. You want, you want to walk. So, Saul, yep. you, uh, you walk out there as well, experience the same, basically the same thing, and you will also see the same thing that the water seems to be about a half inch away from actually touching uh the disc um and i think you're a little bit taller than rio right yeah he's like i think he's like elves are taller in this setting he's either like six three or something like that uh so you have a little bit of different vantage so you can see that it actually extends down so it it appears that this this disc isn't actually floating. It actually goes all the way down to the floor and the water isn't touching it at any place. So you can see about a half inch gap all the way down about, you know, eight, nine feet straight down where the water comes right up to it. And then is like half an inch just doesn't touch it. Hey, Rio, the water's not touching this uh, thing anywhere. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what I saw too. Yeah. So the water doesn't hey, touch wonder- this thing. I wonder if the water in my finger will touch it and I'll reach out to try to touch the stone. All right. Uh, so there's a sort of a, a sensation of resistance, mm-hmm. but, but you can touch the stone and your the water in your hand will as well. Okay. Is it cold? Uh, not, I mean, it, you're in, in a like multi hundred feet down <laughs> catacomb full of water so it's that cold but it's not right like i mean so it's, it's not different right okay. Past temperature. and is it is it stone it, it is it you said it was stone it appears to be stone um, yes it appears to be stone and it's like Does hard it be... work stone so it's like blocks interconnected okay. blocks that, sh- that shape this what appears now to be a column that is just there's water has come all around it so it looks yeah. like there's a foot of a disc floating but it's actually and it, it's different. definitely and it's definitely different than the rhomboid cube that uh that uh rio has right Correct. yes okay i pull it out though does it react or do anything no put it back in my pocket uh, pull myself up out of the water okay you're now on the disc 
Uh, it appears to be worked stone. Uh, in the center, there is um, some like indentations that you know just draws your eye. And when you get close enough, you see that there is uh, an aperture that is shaped like an octagon. That is so basically, there's just like imagine someone took like a laser and cut an octagon shaped slot all the way around dead center of the stone. Uh, each section of the octagon is about three inches. And the width is about half an inch. Oh. That, that seems like this thing is one of the, the diagonal pieces. It does look like your whatever it was you found would fit into one of these eight slots that connect to make this octagon shape. All right. So I'm going to jump up with him. Okay. Offer a hand. Um, first off. Again, just checking up above us, is there any like corresponding circle up top? No. Okay. So something that might come down to smash us? Or shoot us up to smash? Or a roof ninja? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, car column made out of blocks. Like we can see the seams. Yeah. So to speak. And but it's a smooth top, yes, except for these. And there's only eight, so one for each side of the octagon, yep. And it's all around the outside, so we can. And it's and said it was kind of a big, yeah, it's like maybe pillar. 20 25 feet across, so there's room for you, all three of you, and many more to stand. And then just in the center is where this oh, 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 so so at the very center, a very small circle, yes, correct, okay. And I'm I'm of I'm saying all of this out loud as I'm describing it. Uh, so, um, is Daria, your book still taking notes? Yes, cool. uh, and the book is actually floating back by Daria. And as I am like looking at it and I'm describing all of this, the the book is sketching and writing in words. There's actually two pens right now going simultaneously. One of them is drawing. And one of them is just literally transcribing what I am saying word for word. So fantastic. Sorry. You said there were also. I like to think, rooms. though, that you, you're not a great speller and your pens make oh. the same mistakes you would make. Oh, 100%. Okay. Yeah. And then, <laughs> spell check. And so, sometimes the pens correct me, though. Like it writes out a word and scribbles it out. And then we it write. uses the better <laughs> word than what you say. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it does. It totally yes, does. Quick build always. That's so great. I'm also going to be looking around to see if anything else is disturbed, if anything is weird, before I will, I will, uh, like air push the with me. The oh, yeah, they'll just follow up. right behind you. Okay, good. Then I'll and I'll get myself up. I didn't want to be last ones. Soaking wet. All right. So all three of you now are on the disc. And the carvings on the stone, do they look like any of the carvings we saw in the temple before? Uh, so the only carving is just the slot that looks... Okay. I want to use the word keyhole because that's the, the best thing I can think of. I'm not saying that's what it is, of course, but basically you think that your disc that you found the other day would fit into one of the eight slots, uh, making up one eighth of this octagon shape. And there's no other writings or runes or anything. Nope. Okay. So now that we're all here, I'm holding this thing and I'm holding it above one of the little slots. Yeah. Are, is, is the slot like perfectly cut or would there be room if i plopped the piece in i could fish it out again like with my finger or the edge of a dagger it's pretty well precise but because there'd only be one of eight you would be able to get to top and the bottom if that makes sense like you wouldn't be able to pick it up this way but you'd be able to pick it up like so it so way. it really oh, is like I a see. like a circle yes but an octagon yes it's like one channel it's not eight individual correct yes one one okay. channel so, so this is more like one of eight pieces. Yes. Yeah. I see. Like the rod of seven parts. 
but I did plus one. All right, so clearly this fits in here, right, gang? Uh, maybe. I mean, probably. Do we, try it? Yeah. Do, we, do we try it? Yeah. Okay. How can we come all this way? How can, how can we not? So I'm just, I'm just thinking here, based on knowledge and experience that I have, if this is some sort of key or portal or I don't know what, I would assume it would need all the pieces to activate. So there's a good chance we drop this thing in here, nothing happens. There's as equally a good chance if we complete the circuit in the wrong way, something bad will happen. Which could include time travel or roof ninjas, because this is a Michael game. And this is clearly a magic key, so we are spot on. There's no dagger yet, though. I mean, that's next game. Yeah, Obviously, Saul gets a magic dagger. Yeah, of course. So, I, 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 we're here. I think we should try it, but let's, let's move back to the hallway, <laughs> and we can do this from a safe distance. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. that's probably smarter. Okay. I'm not going to do it with us standing very, here. Yeah. It's a very Dummy. good. All right. So, no, I you're going to you get... be really close enough to observe it. For science. I would like to observe from a distance for explosions. <laughs> <laughs> so the plan is to get back off the column, go back yep. down the hallway a little bit, and then use yep. your magical like mage hand abilities yeah. to, to drop the key in and then see what happens. Yeah. yeah. All right. Is everybody going along with the plan? Oh, yeah. Good plan. Okay. Uh, rocket shipped at the column goes so there Boy. is um, an audible and reverberating sort of funk sound um, as if a much heavier object was put into to place here and it it echoes and then there is a very rapid change in the water uh, as if like a vent had opened and now the water starts to rush out and just the water level sinks quickly. It's not enough to drag you under, but you definitely would f feel it as an opening around the base of this column opens up and, and the water just goes out within you know a matter of a couple minutes. And you can see that on the column, there is uh, a basically like a mural that's painted that has survived this water because it wasn't actually ever touching it. And it looks kind of like a carousel. Um, there's like a carnival. So there's like paintings of like a wagon. Nope. Uh, that, nope. Uh, and yes. it's, you get a sensation as if it's moving as like if the whole thing is slowly turning again, that kind of carousel sort of, and you don't hear it, but it's almost like you feel the sounds of like a nope. carnival. I quit. Do, 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 I quit this game. Do, We're done. Do, game do. over. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a good night. I love this game. We'll see you in two weeks. And then there's a very sort of loud no. And all the magical lights go out and you're in complete darkness for a moment. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, Rio, I changed my mind. This is a bad plan. We, we hear a voice say no? You hear a voice say no. And then the lights go out. I cast my lights again. All right. So when you cast your lights again, the they don't seem to be as effective. Like they're there, but it's as if the shadows are pressing down on you. And this the darkness is closer than ever. So you can't quite see as well. And there is a figure in front of you, which, well, technically is behind you, the way you came, on the same level of the hallway that you were. And they are wreathed in shadow. So they aren't moving, but the shadows are almost like ebbing and flowing over them like water. So at some points they are more visible and at other points they are less. They are about six and a half feet tall. Uh, maybe female shaped, but it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, gray skinned. And they are covered in what looks to be like a net 
of some sort, like it comes down off their head and then off their shoulders to about waist high. But the webbing is netting is like um, sort of viscous and it seems to be moving a little bit. And then on either side of them are spiders that are about the size of small ponies. And my alarm spell did not go off? Correct. I hate you. Oh, hate wow. Oh. Done. Rio dies. Uh, Game over. Does, does that figure look familiar to me? No. No, they do not. Okay, good. Well, yikes. Good. So, also, yikes. All right. One, so, so, lights went out. No. Rio goes, ha! Uh, Recasts the light. So, doesn't work. Essentially, this is kind of what you see. Oh. Hey, I wonder what it is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's completely different than what that book says, but uh, that's what it looks like. It's a good visual, though. Yeah, that's a good one. I wanted to include that. Uh, and it is, in fact, holding a staff, uh, though this staff looks a little bit different. Uh, there are four spindles on either side that are coming from around, and then there's a crystal uh, held inside the, as if these little fingers were holding it. Uh, and the so, figure repeats, No. You are not supposed to be here. Not now. Not this time. I understand the word she's saying, but I don't understand what she means. No, will there be another time? Uh, With the rest of the rods. We don't need to be here. We can go. Just sorry to disturb you. I'm... And all of your kin, we left lunch. It is too late and yet too early. Oh, well, now you're just not making sense. <laughs> That's not nice. So Rio is composing himself. I, I, you seem to know who we are, but we do not know who you are or where we are. Can you give us any insider information into what you are referring to? I am the mistress, the keeper of secrets. Greetings, mistress. I am Rio Baymont, but it seems like you already know who we are. I do. Or I did. Or I shall. Uh, Daria Irthos, daughter of the daughter of the green, and she just curtsies a proper formal. And the water's all gone at this point, right? Correct. So it's like sort of muddyish and slick, but all the water has gone down. But the, the darkness is so oppressed, you actually can't see the column behind you anymore. You have a small bubble where you are standing, but it should be behind you just a, you know, a few more feet, but you actually can't even see the sides of the wall. All you can really see is this figure, and she, it appears to be right on the edge of where your light is, uh, is at, and then the, the, obviously the spider's beside her. Um, I do apologize. This is not the way it should be or was foreseen, but I am bound by the ancient ways and you are not allowed to be here. And she's going to take sort of a, it's almost like she takes a step back or maybe the darkness just comes more forward, but she is no longer visible. But the two spiders scurry forward. And now we will roll initiative. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Why? Hello. Okay, okay. Yeah, Rio, this was this was a bad plan. Bad plan. Or was it the perfect plan? Or was it the perfect plan? Oh, and you say it like that. <laughs> There's my character sheet. <laughs> All right. So who thinks they have a really high number? Like twenty or higher? All right. Rio, what'd you have? 23. 23. All right. So who has like 10 or higher? 
I do. All right. What's your number? 18. 18. All right. Daria, what'd you have? I rolled a 12. I don't know what my pluses are, but. Uh, it's plus one for your level and then whatever your dexterity modifier is. So there was a word double two. So that's 12, 13, 14. And I don't know what my dex, my dex is 17. So plus three. 17 total. Okay. Well, the 12 plus three plus one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You're still all in front of the spiders. All right. So essentially in scene setting, as far as you know, you are in the same place that you were. You just can't see as far as you were able to before. So you're essentially in a smaller bubble. We'll say it's about 20 feet in circumference. So you believe that just past the edge of the light behind you is the column that you were on before and that the key is currently in and there's the space around it and then it's like an ice cream cone and it, and it dips down. You believe that just beyond your vision to either side of you are the walls of the catacombs where the bodies still lie. And then in front of you is this hundred foot or so hallway that will lead you back to the surface where the spiders are. So the spiders are between you and, as far as you know, the exit. Uh, Rio, you are first. What would you like to do, sir? And there were two spiders? There are two spiders. They are roughly the size of ponies. So, like, you know, obviously their arms go up and then go back down. So the, the, the elbows of their arms are the highest point, and those are about the size of your head. So they're... The arms are about five feet. Their faces are about four feet. And they're moving towards us in a spidery fashion. Yes. All right. So I am... I am going to use, if you're okay with this, a, a cantrippy version of Ray of Frost to ice the ground okay and hope it makes them slip and slide and trip okay i am totally fine with you doing that um obviously there's no actual rule for that that i'm aware of they have multiple legs um so i probably what i would do i'm just going to use 5e i'm going to give them disadvantage on their attack for the first turn since their footing isn't steady. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. So what does it look like when you do this? So again, magic in my world is always is unique to the caster. So what does it look like when Rio casts this spell? So I am going to... Um, uh, it, it would look like... Uh, no, normally it would be like a ray coming from my fingers. Like there'd be a little ball of cold like a snowball that materializes and the ray shoots out from there. But instead, uh, like it, it pulls up this little ball of ice and I like blow it like a blow dryer almost on the, the ground in front of us. And it just develops this little rhyme of, of frost and slick ice real right. quick. And there's that sort of crackling sound as the ice forms. Uh, yeah. The spiders continue to scurry forward, but yeah, their, their legs start to sort of splay out they have enough that they're able to compensate, but they are sort of slipping and sliding uh, as they're getting closer to you. All right, Saul. Okay, Saul um, is going to, um, he's going to to start to, um, he's going to reach for his arcane might and he's going to start gathering it within him. So um, if for, for this case, what's going to happen is there's going to, the air is going to, the, the moisture in the air is going to start to crystalline out kind of like um, into these, uh, you know, ice and kind of snowflakes. And it's kind of going to start to kind of spin around him as he's pulling in the this um, hold arcane energy. So that's his action, his gathering power. And, and my benefit from it is going to be a uh, plus one to my um, AC, a, plus one to my AC until start of next turn. Okay. All right. And Daria. I am going to try to cast Big Muddy. Sounds like the time to do it. Yeah. If there ever was a time, that is my, that's, that's the plan. Okay. I have no idea what that does, so you'll have to explain it to me, please. It's going to stick him in the spot. Okay. 
right? I can't just Google it. I've got it right crazy. here. Um, yeah, each enemy with 50 hit points or fewer or that is touching the ground or water and doesn't have flight, right. the target is stuck. Save ends. All right. Nice. All right. So they do have less than 50 hit points, so they will be affected. They will become stuck. So what does it look like when you cast this spell, Daria? Uh, Daria is going to is going to kind of physically kind of ball up her fists and bolster her courage a little bit and, uh, and say, I t- you don't need to fight us. You don't need it. And uh, so just to so just stand still and she's going to flex her hands out uh, and uh, sort of a sort of a really faint, almost like a bioluminescent breeze, but really, really faint is going to sh- come from her from her hands and and hit the ground and then kind of kind of viscously surround those spiders. OK. Uh, so the the ground, which was previously frosted with ice, now sort of congeals into this like bluish brown water mud ice, and actually like freezes around their feet, uh, basically encasing them and making them stuck. Uh, it is now their turn, and uh, one of the two. So basically, they can't. They don't have ranged attacks. They can't do anything. They're trying to move forward. Uh, so went ahead and rolled their saves. One of them passed. One of them failed. So the one that passed actually will pull out to the point that it breaks off the tips of their feet. So there's like about four inches off of each of their legs that they just break off and they're now walking on these stumps as they skitter closer to you. You also hear a skittering sound further in the darkness that there might actually be more spiders than the two you can see. And there is a light that erupts behind you as you now see the figure that was originally in front of you, this female mistress, is now on the dais behind you with another spider that this one is larger as in like wider, like its its legs extend further out, but it's about the same height. But it's rippling with almost like rainbow colors, like this whole spider is shimmering uh, colorfully. But that is everyone's turn, so we are actually back to the top. Rio. And uh, actually, I'll, hold on. Give me my thing here. Boom. Escalation dies at one. All right. So. All right. Frozen spiders walking on stumps. One's frozen to the ground. Yep. One's walking on stumps toward us. Yep. We There might be spiders further down the exclamation point. We hear skittering. Yep flash of light behind us mistress is on the dais with giant rainbow spider correct crazy cuttlefish spider so i'm going to turn in a in a a, like in that split second of seeing the light is she just standing there is she looking menacing does she look like she's casting a spell so the expressions of her face are they're not totally human uh but there's nothing about the expression that seems aggressive or angry. It's very sort of resting Eden face or Edder cap face, I guess what this is. Um, but uh, is definitely looking in your direction. But you said it was the, is the column lit up or is the light coming from somewhere else? It's calm. The uh, light's coming from the staff that it was holding that had the crystal. Oh, that, is, gotcha. that is what's emanating light. But it's still even even their light doesn't seem to be as bright as you would expect. Like, and there's just like oppressive shadows all around you. They're pushing in, uh, very almost claustrophobic. So I'm gonna try to reason with her. Like, mistress, if we're not supposed to be here, we'll leave. Let me let us go. We don't have to deal with spiders. We'll walk away. No. Why? It has been written. So shall it be. But you also said it may not have been written yet and it will come to pass. So can't we change the writing? Not if you die today. 
will then let us not die and it'll be fine. That is not my choice. It is written. Whose choice is it? Do I have to call your supervisor? She will not respond. Damn it. Well, I kind of feel like I wasted my whole turn talking. Well, no, you can still take an action. Talking's free. free. <laughs> but for so, so for right now, the seems like the one big the one big spider that is now stumpy is yeah. still moving aggressively toward us. Correct. <sighs> Fine. Well, if this is what it's going to come down to, then this is what it's going to come down to, and I'm just going to. Still looking at her. This is on you. I didn't want to do this. You did this. This is on you. Yes. And I'm just going to snap my fingers and I'm going to magic missile Stumpy. Okay. And that is five damage. Five damage. All right. What does a magic missile look like when you cast it? So in this case, it is. Uh, so I snap my fingers. And it's almost like for a split second you see like like a a, a fist made out of force just <laughs> right into the spider's face. Perfect. All right. Uh, so that's five damage. That is Rio's turn. Uh, it is now Saul. Uh, and just for Lisa again, I know you're the newest to Thirteenth Age. Like I don't know the rules either, but uh, the escalation die, which hopefully you guys can see you now get an additional plus one to all of your attack rolls uh, that will continue to go up as long as certain things are happening. So whenever it is your turn to attack, if you do roll an attack, you get plus one. Uh, Saul, what are you I think doing? I it's sir? also skill checks too. Oh, okay. Double check. <clears throat> um, so how far away are they? Uh, how far away? They're, they're like 10 feet away. Yeah, right? yeah. They right? were like 20 feet at the most and they've started moving forward. So, yeah. Uh, the, the lady in the uh, the uh, the Etna cap and the chris, the um, prismatic spider. They are probably is... about twenty five feet behind you. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, why not? <clears throat> I will. Or uh, saw so I will turn and um, as this this ball of, of swirling winter surrounds Saul, um, and it, and at this point his his um, his skin has begun to like freeze over, starting at the mouth, and it's kind of like expanding up around his um, around uh, you know his eyes, his eyebrows, and, and whatnot are are frozen. Um, at, at this point, it's just this intense arctic cold breath is coming out of his mouth and he just sort of reaches it roars back and just roars with the the power of winter um in in their direction and in uh the towards the pair the the uh towards the prismatic spider and uh the the air cap all right so you're actually okay all right so is that an attack roll you make or is that a defense i do a, I've, I'm going to have to make the attack roll here um, against their physical defense. So um, I'm going to say plus charisma and level um, two plus two because it's an empowered blast plus one from that. So it's a total of nine to a 21. 21 will hit against physical defense. Yep. Is it one roll oh. for both of them? Uh, I don't know how it works in in uh, 16th age or 13th age. Do I, I think, roll separately I think for believe each you target? attack individually, but you do damage like one damage to all, but you attack individually. I think. Okay. Like... All right. In this case, then I'll then I'll attack individually then because it's it can target um can potentially target both of them. Okay. If they're next to each other, so they are they are touching each other. Oh, in this case, um, can I spend my Benny for a reroll? Uh, yes. Uh, again, for the audience, uh, kind of like inspiration, kind of like Benny's from Savage Worlds, every uh, player starts with one. They can use it for certain things like re-rolls or doing max damage or minimizing damage. Hey, thank yeah, you, Tom Sparrow, for the subscription. Yay! Yay! So that'll be another uh, 21. Yep. Uh, both of those will hit. Okay, so... Actually, hold be... on. My apologies. I'm looking at the 
spider entry, and it's actually missed. Was, they have a 23 armor class. I was looking at something okay. else. Alrighty. So I hit the other cat, not the spider. Correct. Uh, it, okay. the, the spider, you get the feeling it's almost like there and not there, as if maybe it's yeah. out of phase, and then that might be why your uh, spell did not affect it. Six. So if this is going to deal double damage because it's an empowered breath weapon. Uh, six, ten, twenty six points of cold damage. Whew. Okay. Uh, so that blasts the uh, mistress. She takes two involuntary steps backwards. Uh, this was very forceful, and there's like a sheen of frost that covers her body, and then that sort of viscous webbing that was over her has gotten brittle and is starting to crack and fall off in places. Uh, and she doesn't look happy, but she doesn't vocally respond either. All right, Daria. Okay. Um, Daria is just is is now kind of panicking a little bit, uh, just just big anxiety, and she doesn't understand why shadows and creatures, and it's not it's 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 in the dark, and she doesn't understand. She's just gonna look at that mistress and say, "Just why? Why are you? Why are you doing this?" And that energy is gonna send uh, thorns. Okay. Now, one thing we haven't really touched on um, is one of your kind of tied into your one unique thing is that when you get emotional, uh, whether it's you know fear, anger, love, whatever, it can have an effect on the weather. So now we're way underground, so we don't know if this is even affecting, but if, but if we were above ground, what do you think would be happening with the weather around you right now? Um, with the, the level of my panic, yeah, it would be a little heat lightning or, or, um, what's that? Like, like the, like the little poison thorns would kind of crackle. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Fair enough. So uh, my apologies. So you can continue. So, so what exactly are you doing here with your ability? I'm going to cast poison thorns at her. Okay. So is that um, a, a roll you make or do I defend against it? Uh, it'll be an attack roll. So attack. your wisdom plus level versus the mistress's physical defense. Physical defense. No, that's five. All right, so that is going to miss. Now, you do have your token as well, because everybody starts with one. If you would like to re-roll, you may. Oh, let's re-roll that. For, okay. Yeah, let's use that. Oh, that's a 13 for 15. Uh, unfortunately, that is still going to miss. No, yeah. So uh, it's just going to look like like crackling uh, electric static shock and little teeny bits of kind of lightning around these thorns that go wide and miss. Gotcha. All right. It is now the spider's turn. Uh, the spider that is free is going to lumber forward. And I will roll a die to see which one of the three of you it focuses on. And it's actually going to focus on you, uh, Daria. So it is going to attack you. I brought you rabbits. Uh, that is only an 11 <laughs> versus your armor class. I'm going to guess that misses you. No, that hits me. Okay, so that hits you. You're going to take four points of damage. Okay. All right. right. Ow, ow, ow. Um, from the darkness behind the two spiders, five more spiders come in, but these are like chihuahua-sized, so they're much smaller, but they are scurrying in, and they are actively avoiding the... Um, the area of effect from the ice and from the muddy waters. So they are not going to act this turn, but they will go on the turn after. And uh, the uh, mistress is going to look down, pull out that key that uh, Rio put into the slot, uh, tap her staff, and her and the phase spider disappear. 
Back to Rio. Okay, so with her disappearing, what happens to my light spells? Do they still stay non-effective? Uh, so they stay... Um, well, yeah, actually, they would go back to their normal full effect of uh, area of effect here. Uh, the, so the shadows would recede back. You'd be able to see everything that you could see for it, which you are apparently in the same place you were. Uh, you didn't actually move. But then you can see that there, there are the two spiders and then there are the five smaller spiders. There are no other spiders around you that you can see. Gotcha. And we're at the top of the round. So our yep. escalation die is a... Two. So let me... Boop. Nope, nope. Okay. There we go. I practice this and everything. But if we're looking at the column behind us, so we've got we've got the sloping ground down to it, and then it comes up to basically our like our chest. Uh, so, yeah. You know, well, because when you're walking, your head was about level with. Oh, the, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So if I walked down on the slope, it would be way taller than me. Not way taller, but I mean, but you could grab it if you wanted to get up on there. You could. It would take your turn, but you could do yeah. it. Yeah. But these are spiders, and spiders are going to climb. But she's gone, but the spiders are definitely still attacking us. Yes. Fine. Stupid spiders. All right. Uh, so there's two giant spiders, and then the five smaller ones. Yeah. Actually, I need to make a save. Uh, it did pass, so both spiders are now free. Okay. Um So I am, the, the five smaller spiders, did they kind of spread out? Or are they in a group? They spread out, yeah. Okay. I mean, they're not like perfectly like in a semicircle flanking position, but they're not like huddled together either. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to use color spray. Okay. Which is an at will spell when the escalation die is even. Uh -huh. It allows me to target 1d4 enemies in a group. So eh, only one. Never mind. I'm still going to target Stubby that okay. I already hit. And this is a... Uh, 23 to hit. Uh, yeah. All righty. So Stubby is going to take seven psychic damage. Okay. And if the target has 10 or fewer hit points after the damage, it is weakened until the start of my next turn. All right. It would, in fact, be weakened at this point. And I know you're going to ask, so I have to look up what weakened does. So bear with me. Um, I'll take this moment what? to say thank you, uh, Wager TJC. Wager? Yeah, I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry, but thank you for hanging out with us. Appreciate it. Creatures that are weakened take a negative four to attacks and defenses. Ah. Good to know. All right. So, Saul, that is you. You currently have seven spiders, uh, five mini chihuahua-sized spiders, two large pony-sized spiders, one of which appears to be near death. The other has not yet been injured. All right. I'm going to roll for recharging my breath weapon. Okay. Uh, I got it. Yay! Yay! Um, and since it recharged this round, I have to use it. Um, or I have to see if it'll recharge later, but I'm not going to miss it. Um, I will turn my attention to the other, the, the largest, you know, mass of spiders. Okay. And um, again, uh, you know, there's still kind of the uh, all of the cold, you know, steam and whatnot coming out of his mouth. He'll, he'll roar back again and just unleash another um, massive blow of uh ice and um all right cold. so i'll say if you aim at the spider that's injured you can get it and two of the smaller spiders if you go for the okay. other spider you can get it and three of the other spiders uh you know we'll we'll um we'll go with the injured one and you know just try to remove okay. as many as possible so uh that is unfortunately going to miss because i rolled a natural one yes so <clears throat> yep that uh that's that then he our just uh you know just and you know flails about and uh misses so his, uh, so so i gotta yeah. ask though you shouldn't have missed that i mean it's a breath weapon they're mm -hmm. giant spiders so we got to come up with some reason like what happened to cause this to not work 
Maybe it had something to do with there was um, when that uh, charismatic spider and the the um, the edder cap um, made in maybe perhaps when they warped out they they somehow affected um, you said because they kind of weren't there maybe or were partially not there maybe there was some residual magic that had kind of washed over um, those spiders and they just kind of phased out right as the spell went through. Okay, that works for me. All right, so Daria, you're up. So you still have seven spiders, five to wobble size, two pony size, one of which appears to be very injured and near death. What would you like to do, please? You're muted. Take my short bow and try to finish off that really injured one. All right, let's have at it. You get plus two for the escalation die. 19, 20, 21. Uh, yeah, all day. You hit. Um, that's a D6. Plus Three. Level. Four, five. All right. What does it look like when you kill this spider? Um, it looks a little frantic, but it's something that Daria is really well versed in with this bow. So she's not even really looking really she it's a it's a very fluid motion she takes that bow strings it with a foot knock knock pull shoot and uh it goes down and then she's already looking all right so i just want to uh, and i want to get back to back with saul if i can yeah i don't see why not all right it is now the spider's turn the one that is still remaining i will roll to see which one it goes after I will now roll a different die since I just dropped that one on the floor. Uh, once again, going after Daria. This be something about... Uh, <laughs> that is a natural 20. So, <laughs> so that is going to do 8 points of damage. And you are taking 1d4 ongoing poison damage. No. I am resistance. I think I'm resistant to poison. Ooh. Well, that would be important for you to double check, but you take the eight e anyway. All right. And now it's the five smaller spiders. And they... They're actually going to attack Saul. So they swarm around and then kind of regroup. And they essentially attack you as a swarm. Okay. And that is a... 16 total versus armor class. Um, yeah, I'm going to use shield. Um, so you have to, uh, it's, I get to get cast as a free action and you get to reroll the attack. Okay. And that is a 19 versus armor class. Still hits. Okay. So you take five points of damage. Oh, okay. And that is everybody. So we are back to the top, back to Rio. And I feel like you guys are still doing well. So we will be at Escalation Die 3. All right. So five little spiders just swarmed Saul. Big spider is close enough to be attacking us. Yes. All right. <sighs> Eh, why not? Overkill. Uh, acid arrow on the big spider. Okay. Screw it. Uh, so <laughs> this is going to be a plus seven uh, unnatural 20. All right. That definitely hits. So I am I'm envisioning I'm envisioning it like I was a little bit closer further down the hallway okay than the other two because i was a i like a, i took a step towards the mistress when she was in front of us when i was trying to talk to her um and then now that they she kind of bounced behind us before she vanished now the two of them are kind of between me and the dais okay and all these spiders are surging against both of them so i'm like a pace or two away and i see all of this stuff um I'm going to look at this last big giant spider that's standing there. I got this grim look of anger. My eyes flash green a little bit. Um, I don't even make, 
a big motion with my hands. It's almost just like a flick. And you see this green aura, uh, like almost flow down my arm and out my finger at it. And that is 22 acid damage. Okay. And five ongoing acid damage. Does it matter? So what does it look like when you melt the spider? So this flash of green, it, it, um, it's almost like the after effect you see when uh, you close your eyes too hard. Like you don't see a shape of an arrow, but it's that neon green against black echo. Uh, like just right through its abdomen coming right out of its face and then it fizzles out the thing splits like bisected down the middle the two halves and then uh they actually just completely melt and disintegrate in the acid and i've got this very angry mutter uh i'm just kind of like cursing in various dead languages i'm very upset all right then so just a second after that so right before we go to saul there's going to be what appears to be a thunderclap now you're so far below ground you shouldn't hear thunderclaps but that's the sense that you get that there's a, just a massive thunderclap that's going off all around you it reverberates the you know the area that you're in and the light almost like a like a i think like a bulb that sort of dims for a second and then brightens brighter than you've ever seen so your your magical bulbs are so much brighter now than you've ever seen them before and everything around you is just covered in light it's as if there's no darkness in this room at all and then it slowly fades back to normal. Saul. Saul has um, these spiders, you know, climbing up on him and try. Oh, uh, well, I got to recharge my breath weapon first. See if that happens. Nope. Okay. So um, he's got these spiders that are, are climbing on him and, and, you know, biting at him and whatnot. He's trying to, to knock some of them off with his staff. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, he will... Um, begin his like hair will begin to um kind of like uh frizz out is you know it starts to spark with um electricity kind of like you know somebody had taken a balloon and rubbed it on his head too long um yeah. and uh, all, all of the you know the hair on his arms and everything is starting to, to stand up and, and he reaches like up towards the sky which is above them and um from from the rock which this doesn't make any sense but it's magic and a spell um a bolt of lightning comes shooting out of the rock and into him and it kind of it kind of uh illuminates like his skeleton through his skin and um comes up out of his upstretched hand and is going to try to electrocute the spiders around him i'm going to use lightning fork okay so here we go not today not my day oh man are you sure uh yeah, I've used my uh can't can't uh can't beat that one. In fact, I'm firing this die. It's, Ooh, uh, it's good. That's rough. All right. Yeah. Uh so mm -hmm. and for the record So the the spiders are just they're they're apparently um he's never actually tried to shock something on him with his spell before, or at least that he recalls. Maybe he's done it sometime, but you know, in the heat of combat he apparently um forgot that if it, if the things are actually touching him, they're grounded to him and they're so part all of the, the spell. spiders are wearing little so, like sneakers. <laughs> yeah they'll have like nikes on so that's why they they do yeah. they do they they got to get some air um air shots. but <laughs> yeah so so they're, they're ground um you know they weren't affected by his magic because they were touching him all right all right so that leaves daria so we have five of the smaller spiders swarming over <laughs> saul's face oh uh uh use the bow 
over Saul's face. It's a threat. It's a threat. I, I backed up to him right before. Yep. Yeah. So I am just going to use my hands and try to bat them all away from him. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Just get get off, get off, get off him. So I guess this would be an unarmed strike. Uh, unarmed again, strike. escalations at plus three. It's going to look like a horrible, frantic, slappy fight. <laughs> this is an no, archer reference. That's a five everyone. again. Nope. No. Oh. I'm just going to, I'm just, I'm just slapping him. Okay. Yeah, I just, so the spiders. I she's not hitting the spider. She's hitting she, Yeah, she's just slapping you. And what's happening oh, is. At, get off him. Get off him. As that's happening, the spiders are walking up her arms and they're all swarming. Now they're on her. So they're going to attack her this turn. Uh, I rolled a nine. That's a 12 total, which I believe does hit you. Uh, so that's going to be five more points of damage. So these creatures, again, for those of you kind of new to 13th Age, these are what we call mooks. So they attack as a group, but if you do damage, you do damage as a group. So it's like possible to take out more than one with one attack. Uh, and it is now Rio's turn. Escalation die is four. How many points does that have? Five points of damage? Uh, five. Okay. Basically, each one does one point of damage to you in the swarm. Did you find out if you're resistant to poison or not? Because that would be important if you need to take damage this turn. Where did I uh, see? The, the number was 16. It was like... The, like The damage resistance comes with a champion level feat, so we are not there yet. Okay. We are not resistance. So you would have taken 1d... Um, 1d8 damage. Yeah, it's not It's not d8. It's, or it's not 8. It's 1d8. Uh, you take it the first time, and then you can save. So you would have taken two more points of damage from the poison. Now you would save to see if you can keep it from happening again. Okay. 18. All right, so oh, sorry, yes. 1920 con? Yeah, so you are resistant. The poison affects you the one time, but it, but not again. So now we're back to Rio. Escalation dies at four. You have five mook spiders to go. So I'm going to try color spray again. Oh. Uh, color spray specifically only targets enemies. Uh, this is a, like a dazzling light effect that I'm trying to distract them, but overwhelm their spidery senses. Uh, but I again rolled a one, so it will only target one of them. Uh, that being said, it is a... So this this is a swarm, so as long as you hit one of them, you, you can affect all of them. It depends on the damage that you do. If, if you do I enough, it, it yep. can affect multiple. Uh, I'm going to use one of my bennies for a reroll here. Okay. That was a bad roll. That was not much better. Um, if you're using damage, you can just maximize the damage. Well, no, this is my roll to attack. I got you. Okay. Uh, I can't do that. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Versus mental defense. That hits. That is their lowest defense. Yeah. Uh, so that is going to be four damage. And if there are 10 or fewer, they are weakened. So um, each of them has five. So all of them are weakened, but it doesn't even kill one of them. So, so uh, neg four attack, neg four defense until top of the next round. Gotcha. All right, Saul, you're up. All the spiders have jumped on Daria's face. If you want to slap her in return. <laughs> I thought about using the This is how you slap. <laughs> exactly. Do it. Go for it. Get me. Oh, oh that that uh, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. um it's all it, it, he, he's he, he's he's gonna take his. He's got the you know that big kind of a uh, drag that dragon headed staff he's got, and he's just gonna start like cracking the spiders that are on him with it. Well, they've um, all jumped onto Daria now. So none oh, of them, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that, pool that's... Pool Q. Like, pool Q one of them off. Just... Yeah, we'll try that. that that'll Four go buckets. well. well. We'll do that. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. Here so, we go. I, I just want to point out, this game has gone from explore creepy dungeon tunnel to really terrifying spooky thing to three stooges. Yep. 
That's oh, yeah, totally. pretty classic. I mean, if you expected anything else, I don't know what to tell you. Right. <laughs> we we so add the escalation you... die to our da- to our attack rolls, right? Attack, yeah. yes, not damage. Okay, so that'll be a um, that will be a a sixteen. Sixteen a will hit. I hit. Awesome. Um, four a d six minus one. Saul is not what you would call um strong. No damage. Well, you have to do at least one. One uh, point of damage. And that's enough to kill one of the five. So now we're down to four spiders. All right. He just he, he just he grabs a staff and just pull cues it and pokes it um pretty hard and uh knocks it off Daria. And he goes, ah my eye but before it dies. All right. <laughs> So Daria, so you still have four spiders on you. Uh, I probably would like step away from Saul, uh, I shake in my arms. My bow is doing no good, so I try my shell blade. All right. Try to try to try to get. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to hurt you, but but you have to knock it off. I'm stabbing you with kindness. Right. 14 to hit. 14 hits. <gasps> what? They're up currently at negative four. That's two points of damage. All right. That's unfortunately not enough to kill one of them, but it will uh, weaken them. All right. So now we're back to uh, Rio. So I'm just going to say at this point, if you guys are okay with it, there's only four mook spiders left. You're going to kill them before too much longer. Um, and it will just get increasingly more silly in the meantime. So we're just going to assume that you have managed to do this without anyone else dying any further, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. Okay. Uh, and then we're getting close to the end where I want to wrap up for tonight. So I'm just going to kind of take control to the end, but we can always do a flashback later. If, um, if there's something that you wanted to do in this case, we can always say that you did it. Uh, thank you. Uh, wanker for the follow that's not what his name but that's what they told me to call him or them Um, (laughs) so as you make your way back out of the temple and all the way back to the top there is just like this raucous chorus of cheers as you come into camp and there are probably close to a hundred dwarves that have tankards And they're like sloshing them together and they're drinking and there's just like they're having the biggest party you could ever imagine a bunch of dwarves having and just cheers and applause and cries. And the thing that you hear most clearly as you're approaching is someone is crying, the son of a bitch did it. I can't believe he did it. The son of a bitch did it. And it takes you a few moments and finally you get close enough to hear and they are saying that the Dwarven King has finally captured and killed the Prince of Shadows. And that is where we're ending for tonight. And thank you for the subscription as well, Wanker. I appreciate it. All right. So for anybody following along, listening now or in the future, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is Shadow Spawns. This is our 13th Age campaign. It plays every other Tuesday. So we'll be back in two weeks with the next session. Tomorrow, I have Detention Live, which is our uh, sort of loosey-goosey talk show format show. It's every other Wednesday at 9 p.m. And then on the alternating weeks, Tom runs a 5e game currently running through Ghosts of Saltmarsh. So please check out all of our other shows that we do here on Twitch. We also are a podcast and a YouTube page. we got a whole bunch of cool stuff. Uh, I would love it if you would check out our stuff and uh, see if there's anything else that we do that you'd be interested in. Uh, Before we go... Brad, tell everyone goodbye and where they can find you on the internet if they want to hang out with you or talk to you or something. Everybody, thank you um, for, you know, hanging out with us tonight. My name's Brad and I'm on the internet at uh, Force and Destiny for the the Twitter. Excellent. All right, Caleb. I am online at the Caleb G and this Saturday, you will be able to find me over on the Identico Twitch channel playing a special one-shot uh, set in their Angel City stories and bringing back some old characters that you may have heard on the RPG Academy back in the day. That is 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on Twitch TV slash Identico. 
Awesome. Thank you much. And then Daria, Lisa. I'm Lisa Lee. You can find me on Twitter at Lisa Bell. And uh, come tune in next week. And do tune into Detention. It's really fun. Detention's a blast. Yeah. All right. And my name is Michael. Uh, Again, I'm the host of the RPG Academy. Everything I do can be found at the RPG Academy. I'm most active on Twitter. So thanks. And we'll do the awkward wave. Goodbye. Good night. And we'll see you in a couple weeks.